Let's talk about insomnia. Insomnia, if you're going to evaluate it, um, you should think of it at th in three stages. One is, um, um, one is latency, and that means the onset of sleep. So t you can ask someone, okay, you're having trouble sleeping. Do you have trouble falling asleep or do you have trouble staying asleep? If they have trouble falling asleep, that's sleep latency. And um, typically you ask them to, to tell you how long it is. Some people will say, oh, it's terrible. I have a ho horrible time falling asleep. It takes me 20 minutes. Well, you know, that's actually not bad. Um, but for that person, they, maybe they used to fall asleep instantly when their head hit the pillow. Uh, other people literally will be awake for hours. Um, if people have trouble staying asleep, then they have frequent waking during the night. And it's not uncommon to um, wake up, go to the bathroom, go right back to sleep. But if in that situation you stay awake for another 45 minutes, that's very disruptive, and um, people can be chronically tired from lack of sleep. And then finally, there's terminal insomnia, and that doesn't mean that it kills you. It just, you might wish that it would kill you. Um, that means just early morning waking. And typically, my patients will say, you know, at 4 a.m., my eyes are, they snap open. They, I cannot shut them again. I cannot go to sleep. If I lie there, I'm just lying there staring at the ceiling. So I might as well just get up. And I'm tired. I need more sleep. But, you know, at 4 a.m., that's it. And, you know, in some cases, people might only get an hour of sleep and then they're wide awake. So those three areas, onset during the night and then terminal at the, at the end of sleep, uh, is how to evaluate it. Um, typically, if people cannot fall asleep, um, there are, you know, that's probably the easiest to treat or at least most direct to treat because if you give something that makes them sleepy at the beginning of the night, they're more likely to fall asleep and then once they are soundly asleep, they're more likely to sleep through the night. Um, the most commonly used non-addictive substance to help with sleep is Benadryl. But Benadryl has a lot of side effects. Um, it can make you feel groggy the next day. It can impede performance, et cetera. Some people um, take Benadryl and they do just fine. Personally, for myself, it doesn't work. Um, so, uh, so I don't bother taking it. It does make me feel kind of fuzzy the next day. So not only does it not work, but it causes problems. Um, there are other antihistamines like Vistaril that for some people work better. Vistaril though is, is available by prescription only um, for no apparent reason. It's no more dangerous than Benadryl. Um, and um, another medicine I, I mentioned already in terms of pain control is Neurontin. And the generic name is important to talk about. It's gabapentin. And it works on GABA. Um, and that's how, it, that's its mechanism of action in terms of um, control of neuropathy pain and also to help with sleep and anxiety. Um, and this is a, a medication with just extreme variation in terms of the effects on humans. Some people will find 100 milligrams to be extremely sedating. Other people will need 3,000 milligrams to get any effect at all. And I've had patients that got no sedation at all with 3,000 milligrams. Again, people's brain chemistry are as individual as their personalities. And, um, but because it's a very safe medication, 3,000 milligrams you know, is very safely tolerated, well tolerated. Um, for some people, you know, they would be asleep all day long if they got that dose. Um, 
But the point of this is, you know, they're non-addictive means to deal with insomnia. Um, there's a substance you can get in the grocery store, or drugstore anyway, melatonin. And I find it works for about 50% of my patients. Um, and it helps you to fall asleep. Melatonin's been studied for um, jet lag, for ad adjusting to different time zones. And it's a naturally occurring chemical in the body that signals that it's time to sleep. They've actually studied hibernating bears. I don't know how they got the blood sample, but um, they crawl into the cave and stick them and get blood sample. <laughs> yeah, that's, you get PhD candidates to do that research. <laughs> and, um, and found extremely high levels of melatonin. So that, and that's what triggers that long sleep. Um, and it triggers sleep for, for humans also. Um, and it works for me. Um, the best form is the one milligram chewable. And I chew it and let it dissolve underneath my tongue, and it works just fine. Um, it more commonly comes in the three milligram size, which to me, three milligrams doesn't seem to be any different from one milligram. So um, all these are uh, non-addictive strategies for dealing with insomnia.